Hello all, Zyzo's here. Uh, so today on stream I'm going to be going over the rules reference guide here. So I'm just going to quickly go over the changes. It's not a particularly big update so it shouldn't take too long. And then like obviously there's a summary here but I just want to go in depth. So in case someone wants to reference it down the line. Now, the important, this thing here, I think has changed. I'm pretty sure this wasn't right in the last one. Didn't have player, it just had card abilities. I'm pretty sure I mentioned that. So now, under rules as written, um, when revealed effects at startup still, uh, still work, whereas they didn't technically under the last update. It's weird that it's not red though. I don't know what's up with that. Additional has had its meaning changed. Um, this, I think the only card that uses additional at the moment is uh, Repulsive Blast. Um, there's an FAQ, the FAQ section on Repulsive Blast had to be changed. But it now adds into the number preceding it. Rather than being separate, uh, this ally limit thing, uh, this is the, if you have a greater number of allies than your ally limit, you can discard one. This was always in the learn to play, but moving it to the rules reference guides all right, it, it should be here, so when someone's looking for that rule, that's where they're going to look. So it makes sense for it to be there. Modes of play, we'll come back to that. Playing cards, see initiating abilities, okay. That's probably more future proofing than anything else, or maybe a lot of people just couldn't find it. Um, there's a few things down here. This is a possible blast I was talking about before. Previously, it used to say something along the line. Oh, I'm pretty sure there was still something here that that it was like one damage and then the other damage, but now it's just uh, all it is one packet of damage, so you can't like ping off tough and then kill something. Which I think is specifically what this is referring to. Now, these two erratas are kind of important. Oh, first errata is kind of important, second one's just kind of a thing. Um, first errata, followed is now an interrupt. Uh, the reason for this is that as a response, followed actually didn't work. As a response, um, the main scheme, the scheme that was attached to would be discarded because of the attached to rules, it would immediately discard followed as well, thus it wasn't in play, thus you couldn't activate it. Um, changing it to an interrupt does kind of mess with one interaction and that's using followed to damage Madam Hydra um, by putting it followed on Legions of Hydra. You can't do that anymore because interrupts go before the trigger, but at least followed works. Um, under rules as written now. So, not the biggest change, it just followed work, followed functions. Functions the pretty much the exact same way too. Um, and Lightning Strike, this is actually, I would say, a clarification um, rather than an actual change, although it is listed as a errata. Um, uh, Lightning Strike was never an attack. It never had the in brackets attack. Um, so it wasn't considered an attack, and it was, it's not like the, the only reason that was ever in question was because uh, there is an upcoming spoiled Black Widow card that has that says make the following attacks. Like in that card it's very clear, but it doesn't use the in brackets attack notification. Um, so people thought that because Lightning Strike said this attack, it also was an attack, but it's not, it was never an attack. Um, it didn't have the necessary requirements to be one. Um, it's just been changed from this attack to this damage. Functionality, actually identical. It's just now clearer so less people will ask about it. Now, the, that's the entire of, oh, and the index. Index exists so you can actually look up numbers. Which is convenient if you're in here often. Uh, so, modes of play. Modes of play I said I'd come back to. This was how they announced, they put up an article announcing this when they were putting up the RRG. This is the bigger, this is the biggest um, change in it, and it doesn't affect you game to game. 
unless you want it to, so that's fine. So it just men it mentions standard and expert mode. Those are the same as they were. No need to worry about that. But it also adds rookie and heroic mode. Rookie mode is standard, but you only play one stage of the villain. Um, basically, in easy mode, if people are having trouble with standard, and there has there is some demand for that. Um, I I'm not sure why I find standard very easy to begin with, but um, some people were having issues with it, so now they have an option. This I'm pretty sure was how they demoed the game last year before it came out as well, so that's a thing. Uh, now heroic mode is the thing that uh, I'm hearing a lot of buzz about in the community. It is all about adding additional difficulty uh, for people that are looking for a challenge beyond expert. Because as uh, as I'm sure I've mentioned previously, some of the expert um, expert villains are actually pretty easy. Um, so heroic mode just allows you to make it uh, more difficult. It is infinitely scalable. Um, it is basically you choose a number and you're playing on heroic that number. So heroic one or heroic three. And uh, when you get to the step where you deal out encounter cards, so instead of dealing one to each player, you deal one plus the heroic number to each player. So heroic one, you're dealing out two every turn plus whatever additional cards you get. Heroic three, you'll be dealing out four cards to each player. So there, there are some little things that are kind of strange with this at the moment. For instance, four player heroic four, uh, sorry, four player heroic three wrecking crew um, doesn't have enough cards. There's only 15 cards in each active, in each villain's deck. So one player actually can't get that third, uh, can't get the third extra card. And that's without even taking into consideration drawing additional cards. Um, that said, I've tried heroic mode. It's really difficult. Um, the the fact that it scales very well to the number of players seems pretty uh, is is a very good thing about it. Like two player, it's still a hundred percent increase at heroic one compared to solo compared to four player. Um, that I think is interesting. It's just that solo solo already is kind of difficult, um, like relatively speaking, compared to two, three, and four player. It it is more difficult playtime generally, not always, but generally. Um, so we may get a chance to play this, but um, I'm not going to focus on it because um, the deck that I want to show off isn't uh, has a really bad matchup um, against the easier scenarios so I've had a lot of trouble trying to use it in heroic but that's it for the rules reference guide it's updated a little bit all clean updates um, I haven't noticed anything that's been broken by the up uh, by the updates here, so that's good. Um, and that's uh, yeah. Haven't noticed anything being broken by the updates, so that's good. Fixed it, and they fixed a couple of things that were broken. Even if it is just a smaller update, it has some a uh, pretty good. Pretty good upgrade overall. Oh, that reminds me. There's one other section. Um, it's got red text. They changed here. Yep, yeah, subtitle to mention alternate alias. I'm not sure what word this was using previously. I'm assuming it was a word that was already taken by a rules term. Um, 
I don't think this has a, any real bearing on the rules. So that's it. Uh, anyway, I'll just going to cut the video here and then I'll get straight into the deck that I'm going to play today.